Well, very intense conversation about corruption, but of course it's all about whistleblowing policy. One of the uh, policies uh, that's never been seen in Nigeria's uh, history is whistleblowing. In other words, it works in other countries. Uh, you get, you basically whistle on, on what is, you're seeing as wrong, then the government protects you. Uh, of course, first check out the veracity of your whistleblowing, uh, then protect you. Uh, for that, you get some compensation, which may include a new identity, so you have what you call the uh, witness protection program in some cases. Uh, but in Nigeria here, uh, we want to unpack this uh, based on where we are as far as corruption, anti-corruption, and whistleblowing. This is one policy that the Buhari's administration is flouting as one of the hallmarks of the administration that is just a little over two years old. Ms. Makrawan is continuing this conversation with us. Where is the meeting point between corruption and whistleblowing? Well, uh, the war against corruption has many facets. There's how to prevent it, the deterrence, as well as the resolution of existing corruption, uh, enforcement of the laws and all that. So basically you want to change society. But you're, uh, like we, we, our starting point is, what, where are we today? Nigeria has many problems, but let's just analyze some of them. One, we have a GDP growth problem. The economy is recovering now, maybe minus 0.5. There's low revenue collection. This improving debt service burden is about 66% of independent revenue. We have inflation, 16.1%, very, very high, but it's coming down. And we have external imbalances. That is, our external reserves went all the way down, but it's picking up. It's about 31.3 billion. Then more than anything else, we have poverty, poverty, general poverty, abject poverty. And then we have a corruption culture, right? So... The whistleblowing program is part of, solves, there's deterrence, and then there's actually blowing the whistle because you've seen it. Because I know there's a whistleblower or a potential whistleblower, it will make me think twice before I carry out a corrupt act. So that is the most important part of it. Secondly is that you can recover stolen funds with a whistleblower. Whistleblowers are always either a deal and sir, a blackmailer, or uh, a strange wife who is upset, or a strange cousin, a strange girlfriend, you know, all sorts of things for whatever the motivation. But that is it. But let's go back to the corruption discussion we had. We said there's prepaid corruption, which is you pay before you get the, before you get the, um, the service. service. And then postpaid corruption, we say, I'm saying thank you. And postpaid corruption can be trenched out and say, okay, I'll pay you part now and I'll pay you later on. Mm -hmm. But then, because of this illegal unenforceable act, somebody comes and says, no, 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 you didn't pay me, therefore I'm going to blow a whistle on you. But the whistleblowing philosophy is that it deters you, and if I know that you've hidden something somewhere, it makes you come back, and I say, either you give me part of what you have stashed away, or I'll blow the whistle, in which case, all of us go down. In a bribery case, mm -hmm. the giver can blow a whistle on the taker, isn't it? Well, both of them have something to lose. That's what we call mutually assured destruction. But if you try to undercut the other party, right, and then it, this guy gets upset, and then he blows the whistle, gets protection, and then you have what we call sol solitary assured destruction. The one person dies. But in the other case, both, both people die. That's what we call mutually mad as against sad. Mm. <laughs> Is, can we hold whistleblowing policy of the Buhari's administration as an economic Benefit. tool? Yes. You see, first and foremost, it's another deterrent, right? If you are depending on the police, which, you have, which according to this data, has been corrupted, right? If you are saying the judges are corrupt, so we need some mechanism to deter people and to recover some of the things. So we, we, we have a revenue problem. Whatever we can recover is good. Whatever we can stop other leakages, because in economics you have injections and leakages. Injections have a multiplier effect to stimulate the economy. Leakages have a negative multiplier, it drains out of the economy. So the whistleblowing program actually deters and reduces the leakages, which in macroeconomic terms actually increases the GDP. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's credit for Buhari is credit for the finance minister, it's credit for the, the, the team, the, the Buhari administration, that it is on the table. So one, we have the NBS report saying, okay. Two, we have a whistleblowing policy. 
which serves as a deterrent. Three, it t reduces the level of impunity. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a paradigm shift. We are moving and then we now go to the next level, which is the initiative of what you call uh, voluntary asset and info income declaration. So you increase your revenue, reduce the leakages, and then, but the problem is that even then, if these revenues are increased, are they going to be used efficiently? How are we using the proceeds of these revenues? How are we using the proceeds of this whistleblowing? Are we using efficiently? Are we just, or is, is it stolen, recovered money stolen again? You know, that's what happened in the Abacha loot. Uh, we recovered money and it got stolen again, and then from the other people they stole. So it, it becomes compounded stealing. And that's a lot like a gangrene. Yeah, what can you do? Uh, uh, and people uh, say if you can't beat them, join them. So, so you think um, if we're going to look at Buhari's administration midterm, then we'll go back to May 29, uh, 2016. If, if we're going to 27, if you look at the Buhari's administration, would you say whistleblowing or anti corruption and efficiency units in the MOF and the rest of them could be, could be put together into a basket and say this looks like President Buhari's administration's economic management policy focus? I think so. Because first and foremost, our oil price in the last three years, average was $50 a barrel. The previous three years, the average price was 105 So we are operating with 45% of the revenue of the previous administration, right? Mm -hmm. So out of necessity, the, the Buhari administration, the Minister of Finance, uh, acting president, everybody, have to manage and use the resources much more 